Welcome to Scanner School. Let me ask you a question. Are you using the right coax for your scanner setup? Many people aren't, and I'm gonna explain the differences of the different types of coax coming up right now on Scanner School. Welcome to the Scanner School, a podcast dedicated to the scanner radio hobby. Class is about to begin. Here is your host, Phil Lichtenberger. So welcome to Scanner School. My name is Phil Lichtenberger. My amateur radio call sign is W2LIE. And if this is your first time joining us, let me say welcome to Scanner School. This podcast is here to teach you everything that you need to know about the scanner radio hobby. So this is session number 30. And all of the show notes, and there's a bonus content that goes along with today's uh, today's podcast, is available at scannerschool.com slash session 30. So today we are talking about coax. There's uh, different materials that make up coax, different diameters. Uh, you have to also be aware of the ban- uh, bending radius. And there's also the, uh, the decibel loss of coax. And we're going to talk about that per 1,000 foot. And also the effectiveness and percentages of different types of coax. So we're going to break apart a couple different pieces that are very common in the scanner radio setup. And there's even going to be one we're not going to talk about today, but I'm going to leave that for the bonus material. So again, if you go to scannerschool.com slash session 30, you can go through and uh, download a copy of a nice little PDF chart that we have set up so you can easily look at the values that we are talking about on today's podcast. But before you go into that, I want to remind you really quick that we have a contest going on. If you go to scannerschool.com slash contest, you can win a $100 gift card to Scanner Master. And again, this is me putting up the money for the $100 gift card because I want to see you improve or build out your very first scanner radio setup. And I want to help you do that. So there's $100 on the line. In order to do that, go to scannerschool.com slash contest. And there's several ways you can enter into it. But the best way you can do so is besides subscribing and following and all the social media channels is to go back to that URL daily. And there's a daily entry that you can click on it. You can gain more more entries uh, daily that way as well. And also before we jump into it, I want to remind you that the podcast today is sponsored by East Coast Pagers. And again, as uh, full disclosures, East Coast Pagers is one of my online companies. And uh, we specialize in Unication and Swiss Phone and Apollo Pagers. So if you're looking for a new Unication G1, G4, or G5, some accessories, or maybe the brand new S Quad 360 by Swiss Phone, go to uh, eastcoastpages.com slash scanner school. You'll see a nice little coupon that's added to your shopping cart if you go ahead and purchase a G1, G4, or G5 product. Okay, so now that the bills are paid, let's move on to the meat and potatoes of the podcast. Coax. So what exactly is coax? Now, Wikipedia defines coax as... Two conductor cable that's a center conductor protected by a dielectric material, followed by a shield, followed by or covered by an insulator. Let's think of it this way. It's a tube, right? The center pin, plastic around it, or another piece of dielectric, followed by a shield, followed by the plastic jacket or the rubber jacket, whatever else it is that makes up that piece of coax that you're using. Now, again, there's several other types of coax out there. There's twin lead, ladder line. We're talking about strictly just the coaxial cable that is most common in the scanner radio setup. So the center conductor is either a solid solid uh, conductor or it's a braided conductor. So the best ones, of course, you can get are the solid ones. Now, dielectric, that's the piece that goes between the center conductor and the shield. And that can either be foam plastic, solid plastic. It could be an air gap with some plastic spacers that are set a certain distance apart to keep the center conductor floating within the coax. Um, and again, you got to remember with that kind, you got to be very gentle with the bend radius. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But if you bend it too tight and you put a crimp, uh, you could change the characteristics of the coax itself. So again, we'll talk about that in a second here. So the dielectric we just talked about. So now we've got the center, the dielectric, now the shield. The shield is interesting in its own way, too, because it can be braided, it can be solid, it could be double braided, two layers, with uh, foil, braid, foil, it could be quad shield, foil, braid, foil, braid. So there's several different ways then you can shield your coax connector. And then, of course, you have the outside jacket material. 
Uh, and again, you want to look at that too, because sometimes it's UV coating on there, or sometimes it's not. So there's a lot of different variables you can look at too when it comes to looking at the actual physical construction of it. So we have the center conductor, the dielectric, the shield, and the, um, the outside jacket. Okay, so let's talk about some of the electrical differences of coax here. The two most common type, now again, we're not talking about ladder line, we're talk, not talking about twin lead, we're talking about standard coaxial cable. And you measure the resistance of coaxial cable in ohms, and it's the value is an impedance. All right, that's how you look at it, it's an impedance value in ohms. Now, for an RF environment, for two way radio, for scanners, and that kind of stuff, the radios like to see a match at 50 ohms. Keep this in mind because TVs, they like resistance values or impedance of 75 ohms. So that's a difference now between what's very common in the TV and satellite market of RG6 versus common cables like RG213, LMR400, right? Those are more of a 50 ohm match. So how do you figure out what the impedance value is or the resistance is on the coax? Well, typically you'll see it in the specs. Uh, RG6 is always going to be a match at 75 ohms. LMR400, RG58, 59, RG213, they're going to be rated at 50 ohms, right? It's a standard on that coax. So the impedance really is made up and it's a whole big nice little formula that we're not going to get into here, but it's the dielectric constant of the inner insulator and the radius of the inner and outer conductors makes up the impedance formula. It's more than we need to know about this right now. What we're really worried about right now is our loss. That's the big value here. Losses are measured in dB or decibels. And you want to buy the coax with the least amount of loss that you can possibly afford. You're not going to want to go out and spend insane amount of money on on rigid hardline you know something on a commercial would be inch and a quarter inch and five eighths there's consumer grade coax cables out there that are about uh three eighths inch maybe half an inch that's perfect for what we're looking at here so what we're going to do is really and quickly break down uh rg213 rg58 lmr400 and rg6 so we're going to talk about rg174 in the bonus content and again, you can download that at scannerschool.com slash session 30. And the reason why we're going to talk about four of these, not five, and we're going to keep the RG-174 for the end, is uh, RG-174 is really found on pre-made mobile antennas that come with a pigtail. That That's a pretty common type of uh, really thin coax, and we're going to get into that in a little bit. But uh, the numbers on that one might surprise you. So what I've done on the chart for the bonus content is I've broken down uh, – Losses at 100 feet to keep everything standard. We're gonna look at 46 megahertz, 160 megahertz, 450 megahertz, and 850 megahertz. Those are the four frequency values that I've picked for the four coax lines. Again, there's a beautiful chart in the session bonus notes for this. So if you get lost, listen to this. Um, you know, it's we're we're gonna make it very simple for you based on podcasts. We're only really gonna talk about the effective value. Now, again, these values I got from going to the Times Microwave website, timesmicrowave.com. And uh, there's a calculator on there. So I basically just use their calculator to get the values here for what we're looking at. And again, we're talking about, talking about frequency. I want to talk about the, um, the effective percentage or the effective value of the coax with the connectors attached to them. So for example, 46 megahertz, RG213 is 74% effective. RG58 is 49% effective. LMR400 is 82.4% effective, and RG6 is 66.2% effective. So at 46 megahertz, LMR400 has the best effective ratio, the lowest amount of loss at 49 megahertz. Okay, let's move on to VHF. VHF at 160 megahertz, RG213 is 56% efficient, RG58 is 26.2% efficient, LMR is 69.4% efficient, and RG6 is 45.3% efficient. LMR400, again, is our winner. At 450 megahertz, we have RG213 at 35.8%. RG58 is 10%. LMR400, again, our clear winner at 53.6%. And RG6 at 25.1%. 
Now, finally, the kicker at 850 megahertz, where a lot of the public safety trunk systems are. RG213 is 22.8% efficient. RG58 is 4% efficient. LMR400 is a whopping 41.8% efficient. And RG6 is 14% efficient. So again, LMR400 is our winner when it comes to the amount of loss. So now because LMR400 is doing so well, let's just take a look at the numbers on here when it comes to losses. LMR400, this is per 100 feet now, is 0.9 dB of loss with connectors. At 145 megahertz, it's 1.8 dB of loss. 450 megahertz is 3 dB. And at 850, it's 4.2 dB. I know, a lot of numbers. Again, we got a beautiful chart for you at scannerschool.com slash session 30. But why am I going through all these numbers for you? We're going through these because I want to emphasize that a lot of people recommend going with LMR 400. And there's a reason for that. And these values that I've just given you are the exact reason why many people go ahead and say, just go LMR 400. It's the best bang for the buck. Yes, it is a little bit pricey, but you're going to get the best value. Think about it. The coax is the only thing between the antenna and the back of your radio normally. So you don't want all this extra loss. I mean, again, 3 dB is your half value point when it comes to signal. So at 450 megahertz, 3 dB, you're losing half. Okay, it's 53.6% efficient. That's pretty close to half in my book. So yeah, you're going to lose half of the value of whatever is hitting that antenna Again, we're, but we're per 100 feet, right? So if you have a 50-foot run of coax, maybe you have a 25-foot run of coax, these values are going to change. I picked 100 foot because that's just a nice round number to work off of, and it makes it very easy to do the calculations. If you want to go to 200 feet, maybe you want to go to 50 feet, it's very easy to start bending these values in order to fit your needs. Now, something else to think about when we go to jumpers, a lot of times we do use the cheaper coax for jumpers. Yeah, go ahead and cringe, use RG6. I prefer you didn't. But if you went with something like RG58, and if you're going to do something like 850 megahertz at a six foot, uh, three foot jumper, maybe your loss is next to nil. That's why we go with the cheaper coax with the higher loss for small jumpers, because the loss at that point for a two foot jumper, a three foot jumper is insignificant. Okay, but for the longer runs from your antenna to the back of your radio, you want something with quality. You want something that is going to get as much signal from that antenna to the back of your radio. So what, again, are some other things that we would like to talk about here? You need a good, solid insulator jacket. Do not kink it. Do not crush it. Do not get it caught on something as you're running it into your house and, and accidentally nick off a piece of that jacket. Because now all of a sudden you've got receive loss now on that cable because you've opened it up to the elements wherever it is that you've now exposed the shield. So always be nice and careful when you are installing coax into your house. Do not put a nail through it. Do not go crazy. And do not, do not crimp the coax. Do not put a crease in it. Always use some nice, gentle bends. That's always what you want to do. You want to keep everything, think of it as a hose, right? You crimp a hose, you put a kink in it, the water supply is going to come, it's not going to be as strong if it was a straight run or if it was in a nice sweeping bend on it. Okay, now again, we talked about jumpers earlier. Jumpers, you want to keep them as short as possible. Use the best connectors you can use. Uh, jumpers like RG58, they're good because they bend easily. They have a really tight turn radius on them. So they're great to use between multi-couplers in the back of the scanner. Or, you know, if you bring it in a house and you have this nice 3 8 inch solid LMR400 that doesn't have a tight bend on it, yeah, go ahead and for the last three feet, run to your, your, uh, your back of your radio using the jumper. I'll forgive you for that one. All right, so we're very happy to announce our Scanner School contest for July of 2018. So the reason why we're holding this contest right now is because we are teaching you about how to build or improve your scanner radio setup. From the antenna, the coax, to the uh, lighting protection, multi-couplers, preamps, anything that sits from the antenna all the way down to the bottom of your scanner radio. And we want to make sure that you're able to purchase something that you've learned or something to improve your scanner setup. So if you go to scannerschool.com slash contest, you can enter 
to win a $100 gift card to Scanner Master. Now again, Scanner Master isn't sponsoring this giveaway. This is money that I put up because I want to make sure that you're able to upgrade or build out your scanner setup. So how can you win? Again, if you go to scannerschool.com slash contest, you will see several different ways and each different way has a number of entries that are associated to it. So one way you can win is by entering daily. You click on the link once per day and I'll give you one entry. The other ways you can win is by going Facebook like, you can join our group, you can follow us on Twitter, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, you can follow my personal Instagram account, or if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to our podcast. Now again, each one of these will give you a different number of entries, but if you've already been a member and you've already been following us or whatever else, you can still go in and join us on a daily entry or just click on the other links. They might work. So again, go to scannerschool.com slash contest for your chance to win a $100 gift card to Scanner Master. So the window of entry is from July 3rd, 2018 to July 31st, 2018. And the $100 gift card will be awarded at noon on August 1st. So we wish you the best of luck. Remember, scannerschool.com slash contest. All right, so that was a really quick discussion on coax, but I cannot stress it enough. Coax is like the most expensive part of your setup, should be. And if you're worried about getting connectors put onto, because connectors, they're not cheap. Um, you know, F connectors on RG6, why a lot of people use it because RG6 is easily available at Home Depot or Lowe's or your, you know, your corner uh, supply house, whatever it is you go to or for your weekend warrior projects. F connectors, they go on easy. The tools from them are cheap. It can be done. You can buy connectors that, that change from F to B and C. But um, for, the, for the bang for the buck, save yourself the headache. You can go ahead and you can buy them already done. Yes, they're going to cost you a little bit more, but it's time saved. You know they're going to be on there right. You know you're not going to have a short in it, and it will be done perfectly. So if you want pre-made cables, I suggest you go to scannerschool.com slash coax or even better go to scannerschool.com slash lmr 400 that's the letters lima mike romeo and the numbers 400 lmr 400 again scannerschool.com slash lmr 400 for where i would suggest the best place to go and purchase your pre-made lmr 400 cables now again these are going to be quality cables and you will not be sorry that you bought them all right that's it for Coax for this week. Next week, we have a very special guest on the podcast, so stick around for that one next week. Now, again, I remember, want to remind you, you can follow us on Twitter at scannerschool.com slash Twitter. Our Facebook community is growing by leaps and bounds. We have a crazy number of people who are now joining the group thanks to our contest. You go to scannerschool.com slash Facebook group and join the community. Be a part of the conversation that happens after the podcast. We do a lot of discussions about a throwback Thursday and some of the older radios that we have we've used in our past or maybe we do frequency friday or freaky friday i'm still trying to figure out what the, what the best hashtag for that one is but uh take you out of your comfort zone and we talk about a frequency that maybe you're not listening to maybe we talk about an aviation frequency or a coast guard frequency something in the marine band something you know what's something that's new that you're listening to we talk about satellite downlink frequencies and whatnot in the uh, in the group and just basic q and a i mean it's it's anything scanner related belongs in our community group uh, we're also putting up videos on YouTube. I'm working on getting those out there at scannerschool.com slash YouTube. And also our Instagram account, scannerschool.com Instagram. It's behind the scenes. What's going on more about my daily life. So you want to know more about me, that's where you can find out more. So again, if you guys haven't subscribed, please do so. Scannerschool.com slash subscribe. And if you wouldn't mind leaving us some feedback in iTunes, that would be greatly appreciated. That's how other people know when they're looking through the podcast directory that Scanner School is something that they should be listening to and that there's some value in this podcast for other people who are, want to be in the scanner radio hobby. So please go to scannerschool.com slash iTunes. All right, guys, that's enough for this week. Again, next week we have a very special guest and then we'll continue to talk about our little journey down the coax after that week. And I think what's next on the agenda is lightning protection. My name is Phil Lichtenberger. My amateur radio call sign is W2LAE. Again, all of the bonus content. We have a nice little chart, scannerschool.com slash session 30. Thanks for listening to this podcast, Scanner School, where we teach you everything that you need to know about the scanner radio hobby. We'll catch you next Tuesday, 73. Thanks for listening to the Scanner School podcast. 
Be sure to visit www.scannerschool.com to access the show notes and bonus content.